episode went more into how to unlearn to learn. I thought that was awesome. I was like, child, why you haven't been had this in here? And obviously I think we all could have just guessed this one. It definitely added more information on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is ruling the world, child. So many people say, I start my HR career because I want to help people. You always also have to remember how to help the company. There's a balance, y'all. We work for both. Again, so much of this I was not surprised about. Hey, y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR, and I am going to talk to you all about the differences in the study materials for both HRCI and SHRM from 2023 until 2024. I come to you with 11 years of HR experience where I've grown my career from an HR assistant to an HR director. Now I happily sit as a global human resources business partner. I have worked in several different industries and I'm so happy to say that I became SHRM SCP certified shortly after I got my double master's degree in MBA and HR management. And so I'm here to give you nothing but more knowledge, not only to help you learn HR better through all of the videos and uploads that's on my channel, but mainly to help you now get prepared and get completely equipped and build that confidence to become HR certified. So this is one of several different videos where we're going to constantly talk about HR certification, how to prepare for it, how to achieve it, and how to put those letters behind your name. So if you're ready to hear all about the changes from 2023 to 2024, then keep on watching. So I am so proud to say that this year there wasn't very many changes. And this is Oh, how many years now? I think this is my third or fourth year making the HR certification study notes. And so each year I make sure to do this video. So I make sure to do the video to tell you what changed from the year previous to the year now, because many people are going to use previous study materials and you want to know, can I use this material? Is it okay? So you absolutely absolutely can use this video to help you make that decision. And I was so happy to see that a lot wasn't changed. I was happy to see that what did change were the things that I expected to change. There are some areas that really, really include new information. I'll say some areas now are pointing out more of like a competency connection. I'm happy to see more of that competency connection. I feel like it was done very thoroughly in previous years, but now I'm noticing that those competency sections are longer. A lot of people in different places, I've noticed in different HR professional groups on Facebook, I've noticed in my videos that people will comment. I've noticed several different places that people are really struggling to understand what competency is. So I did a video all on HR competencies. And just to give you a quick review, I will tell you that it's literally just applying that knowledge, right? Applying that knowledge in the everyday work. And so they've added more in-depth sections for everyone. Some of them are short, some of them are long, but I, I'm just happy to see that now there's a good variation from 2023 until now. It seems like it keeps increasing a little bit each year. There's also more information on DEI, specifically on gender-based concerns. DEI has became this big thing. Um, my cousin, who's like my best friend, he also works in HR. When 2020 came along, he was like, I can guarantee you for 2021, they're going to just make a whole big DEI section. And then for 2022, I guarantee you they're going to take the DEI section out. They haven't taken it out. I would imagine that they never would take it out. And I'm so happy to see that now we've gotten more information on gender-based decisions decisions for employees, how to accommodate them, what does it look like, what are the differences, things like that. So that's in there, not a huge section. None of these sections were like big chunks. They were very minute changes for each section. I also noticed that there was more information on networking. I cannot scream how much I try to tell you guys that networking is important. Networking is huge. If the organization that's trying to get you certified tells you that networking is important, then little old me, you know what I'm saying here to help you too. Like if they're saying it, it must be true. So I absolutely did a video all on networking and guys, you just for your personal self, you should definitely look into that. I love that. It's like really included that like networking isn't the same. It's not just handing out business cards and things like that anymore. It really goes into some of the most current ways that folks are now doing some networking. And I want you to really, really pay attention to that. Not just for the certification for your career. Majority of the growth in my career happened so quickly and in such a good way because of my network. I continuously build a network. Many people think when I get certified, when I get that degree, I'm going to be good. Like I can get a new job. No, networking going to help you way faster. Networking and a good, good resume or even a decent one. When you're using networking, 
Your resume doesn't have to be pristine perfect. You just want it to be pretty good. But networking was also an area that had more sections added on to, all more information. Another section was change management, which I think is great because if you guys work like me in a tech industry or you work in any industry that's gotten hit with like layoffs and real economic crisis that have really declined revenue, then we've all had to do a whole bunch of changes. We've had to do a whole lot of migrations and sometimes those changes can be difficult. If you want to find an employee resist you more, change something, even for the good. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say paying attention to change management. Change management is going to constantly happen all the time, not just with rifts or um, which is a reduction in force, not just with layoffs, not just with industry changes or getting a bigger company or opening an office somewhere else. You're always going to have change management. If you create a new process for performance management, there's going to be change management that needs to take place. If you decide I want to revamp our onboarding process a bit, that's change management. If you're like, I want to find better candidates, that's change management. Whatever you decide to make a pivot to achieve your OKRs or your goals a little bit better for the company, it's going to require a change. And most times those changes either include the whole HR department or includes other people that work for that company. It went into a lot more depth with talent acquisition. So they went in and added a lot more information on global recruiting, job descriptions, and interview prep. Interview prep from the HR professional aspect. So you definitely want to pay attention to that because now it's telling you what changes HR professionals should have been or will be or is already taking place as a change to make interviews better. So it definitely went into what like these virtual interviews look like, how to prepare for them better, how to give a better experience for the candidate, how to get a higher chance of getting a candidate to say yes to job offers. I thought that was super interesting. But it also went into a lot more information or a good bit more information on employee engagement, primarily on the survey side, on like extending a survey to understand employee engagement and understand where employees are engaged or are not engaged and then how you can use that survey to make those changes better. And so it also went into additional changes for training um, and development. So it went more into how to unlearn to learn. I thought that was awesome. I was like, child, why y'all been had this in here? Because too many people come in, and especially if you worked in one company for like 15 years, and I did, y'all know I did a video telling you how you should learn when to get the hell up out of there. Um, and, and I really focus on people who've been with the same company for 15, 20 years, because so many times we've already learned this, we've come conditioned to this, whatever we're doing is what we're used to, and we have to unlearn that. So I thought that was a really good change to put in in learning and development, because not only are we doing that as HR professionals, but you have to do that with employees as well. A lot of times employees will come in, maybe they've done the job before, but your company does a little bit different. Maybe you use a different software and employees will assume like, oh, okay, I already know this. So how do the learning and development team or HR help them unlearn so that they can learn? So that was a good, good topic. And obviously I think we all could have just guessed this one. It definitely added more information on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is ruling the world, child. If you ain't know, you need to get ready. I've done several blogs on artificial intelligence and I did that because it's changing so, so much. There are ways that you can use it to your benefit. There are ways that it could definitely be a detriment to your company. So let's not all get excited about using chat GPT. I think I cringe every time I'm in an HR group and someone says, oh, just chat GPT that. And I'm like, they need to know a lot more than just chat GPT because chat GPT takes the person out of it. A lot of times chat GPT gives you what the world is doing, what the nation is doing, what globally is being done. It's giving you those SEO key and keywords that are popular. That might not be stuff that you're using or that you're doing. Went into, and more in the total reward side, they went into more information on job valuation. And I thought that was good. Not job evaluation, job valuation. So it's saying, how is this job? How do you kind of calculate how important this job is for the company? Now, I will tell y'all that that is an area where you're probably going to get into a little bit more of the formulas. You kind of get into the formulas in your recruitment or your talent acquisition sections, and also like kind of that job evaluation. Other sections too, but primarily those sections on like, how do I 
make sure that this job is worth the company's money. And, and you know, all the time we want to create new jobs to make it better for employees, right? So many people say, I start my HR career because I want to help people. You always also have to remember how to help the company. There's a balance, y'all. We work for both. That's definitely a little bit of an adjustment, but not a huge one. And so they also made some adjustments on pretty much the overall HR organization. And I'm not sure if you guys are all familiar with the RACI chart or the RACI matrix, but that is something that I noticed AI HR honed in on this year. The company I work for full time, we implemented that as well. You pretty much just tag in who's responsible for what, right? But there are different ways that you can do that. So look out for the RACI matrix that's um, not brand new in this in this new exam setting, but they've added way more than they had the year before. They took out a little bit too. So it's, it's a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah. There were some changes into workplace, like how the HR does affect the entire workplace, right? And so primarily, all right, we already seen this in the DEI section, right? We come right back to it again, are very similar. Gender identity laws. There's more laws on gender identity. Identity. The visa process has changed a little bit for employer. There are more categories, and so they went into more details on like how an employee can be categorized if they're on a visa and what you need to be responsible for as an employer and like what things you can be held accountable for. So that was interesting. And lastly, again, so much of this I was not surprised about. The very last thing was equal pay. And so we know we've talked all about how they have really done the pay equity and pay transparency. I did a blog completely on that too, because guys, that's not super new, but it's definitely being more kind of brought into HR's face. Females ain't sitting back no more. And now we have these laws, right? Where certain states, we have to post a job that shows that salary. So I was not surprised to see that as well. But those are all of the changes from 2023 to 2024. There really wasn't a ton of changes. I wouldn't focus on any of these changes because none of them was changed drastically. Just do a good job of learning all of the information, your basic information. I would even hold off on those competencies until I know that information. A competency would be the last thing I would try to tackle and learn. Don't touch it because now you're asking to put a whole bunch of parts together. And if you don't know the parts that make up this big soup, then how are you going to make the soup, right? So I truly hope that you can use this information to help you gauge what works for you. I don't think it's a bad idea to use 2023 material from SHRM or HRCI and easily past 2024. That's happened for years and years. And this is yet another year that you can do the same. So I also have an absolutely free checklist that I already mentioned. So I have that down below as well. I thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor and hit the like button. If you think you're going to find more information that you really, really like, and that you can, you find, you, maybe this, this ain't even your first video. Do me a favor, subscribe. For those of you where y'all just keep coming back for more and more. I really, really appreciate y'all. And I cannot wait to see y'all on the next video.